reinfarction following ACS is actually fairly common even despite some of the, the good therapies that we have today. So the people who uh, first investigated the PLATO trial, they've come together to look at some data to see if they can find uh, some answers to this particular problem. The paper is in the April 22nd issue of Jack and it is Tecagrelor's effects on myocardial infarction and the impact of event adjudication in the platelet inhibition and uh, patient outcomes or PLATO trial. First, I'm with uh, Dr. Kenneth Mahaffey, who is a professor of medicine at Stanford. Before we talk about this particular paper, remind us about the PLATO trial in general. Certainly, yeah. So the PLATO was a large international trial of patients with the entire spectrum of acute coronary syndromes from non-ST elevation, acute coronary syndromes, clear to ST elevation, myocardial infarction. And uh, it studied ticagrelor compared to uh, clopidogrel in those patients and showed that ticagrelor was associated with about a 20% reduction in cardiovascular death, MI, or stroke when compared to clopidogrel. Now in this paper in Jack, you're taking a look at a couple of issues. Before we talk about event adjudication and its impact, what did you learn about recurrent MI? So we learned, uh, I think, two things. One is that recurrent MI remains common um, despite uh, the proven therapies that we have. And so there's still an unmet need despite the advances we've seen recently with trials like uh, PLATO and Ticagalor. And the second thing we learned about myocardial infarction is that even in patients who are undergoing percutaneous coronary intervention and bypass surgery, there's still a substantial risk for what we call spontaneous or non-procedural related myocardial infarctions. And those are important endpoints that we need to continue to understand better in our patients to improve their outcomes. In terms of specifics relating to this paper, what did you find in terms of how frequent does it occur and is it, is it predictable at all? Right. Well, it's, uh, it's still relatively frequent, anywhere from about 8 to 10 percent, depending on the type of MI that you're talking about. It's hard to predict. Um, we have models um, from PLATO and other analyses sets and other clinical trial programs, but our discriminative power, if you will, the C index of these models is really modest. It's only about 0.68 to 0.75, and that's not a very potent uh, predictor. Uh, of how to uh, identify patients at risk for these events. Now you talked about event adjudication in this uh, paper. There are a variety of variables that may affect the data. S speak to that for a moment. Yeah, so what, what event adjudication tries to do, um, and I think does fairly well, is to systematically and in a standardized way assess specific endpoints in clinical trials particularly when the clinical trials are done in very broad geographic regions and across very different practice patterns. So by applying standard definitions in a systematic way, you can identify hopefully all of the events and so that all of the events are very similar rather than relying simply on investigators who may agree or disagree with the event definitions because there's great controversy about some of them as you know, such as myocardial infarction. And they're busy clinicians sometimes, and so doing it in a systematic way and a central strategy, I think, can provide some uh, improved uh, accuracy to the, the process. So what's the take-home message, you think, from this particular paper? So from, from this particular paper, what we showed w was similar to what others in this group has shown from previous trials is that, unfortunately, site investigators underreport myocardial infarctions in clinical trials. And, and I think there's a variety of reasons for that that we could perhaps get into. What it also showed was that um, whether or not you relied on the investigator or the event adjudication committee data, there was still um, reductions in myocardial infarction. When you use the CEC data, because there were more MIs, there were statistically significant reductions in myocardial infarction. Um, slightly fewer events reported by the investigators didn't have quite the power to look at the subgroup of MI, and so it wasn't statistically significant, but it was very consistent. It's uh, commonly seen. I, I think that uh, you know there's been great debate about do you need event adjudication? Um, what are the investigators reporting or not reporting? At least in this data set, um, there were very consistent findings. The, the, one of the important things, though, that we also found is we, we were able to systematically look at how the CEC process um, was carried out in the trial. There's been some investigators that have been critical of the event adjudication process in PLATO and other trials. 
And uh, using patient level data, the raw data from Plato, we were able to show that the Event Adjudication Committee both found events in both treatment groups, but, uh, and then also downgraded events that were reported by investigators in both treatment groups. And on average, they identified a few less events in the ticagrelor arm, which was very consistent with what the investigators reported as well. So I think an important message to get out there about event adjudication, particularly with some of the debate that's going on in the, in the peer review literature right now. So we are definitely still learning from the Plato trial and will probably for some time. This is the April 22nd issue of Jack. Please check out this study by uh, Dr. Mahaffey and colleagues. For Cardiosource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.